So in this tutorial, we are looking at trigonometry with non-right-angled triangles. Okay, we're going to use the sine and cosine rules. Here they are. There's the sine rule. And here are two forms of the cosine rule, depending on whether I'm trying to find a side. That's the first one. Or an angle. That's the second one. And yes, I'm afraid you need to learn these as a GCSE student. So, um, I'll leave you to do that. Let's just make sure we are dealing with the right thing though. If you've got a right angle anywhere in your triangle, go and use Sokotoa. Or if you're not using any angle apart from the right angle, go and use Pythagoras theorem. Right, having established that it is a non-right angle triangle and we do need to use trigonometry, we label uh, the triangle. And there is a convention. The first thing is that you label the angle you want to know or the side you want to know, A. Big A for an angle, little a, for a side. And you'll notice that when I label my triangle, the big letter is opposite the appropriate little letter. Big letters for angles, little letters for sides. Whatever the triangle is labeled, relabel it. Once you've done that, write down what you know and what you want to know. And that's a pretty good piece of advice for a lot of exam questions. It's a good piece of exam technique. Write down what you know, write down what you want to know. That will allow you then to choose the correct formula. Okay, you'll have four things written down, I hope, and you'll be able to pick the formula. You'll notice that this bit of the sine rule, or any pair of the bits of the sine rule, has four letters in it, and either form of the cosine rule also has four letters in it, a big A and a little abc. And then you just substitute the numbers in, and you should be able to solve it fairly easily. Let's have a look at some questions. We're going to do three questions. Um, feel free to pause and see what's going on at any point. So the first one. This is the thing we're trying to find. It's that side there. So we call that A, little a. And then the angle opposite that is big A. So cross out the P and put big A. And then cross out the R, call that B. So the 7 is also little b, and for completeness, although I don't think we're going to need it, q becomes big C, and the little c there. Write down what we know and what we want to know. Okay, so what do we know? Well, we know little b is 7. We know big A is 105. We know the angle b, big B, is 35. And we're trying to find little a, because that is x. And with those four things, we are going to use this bit of the sine rule. You'd only ever use two parts of it, so you've only got one equal sign. And write down your formula. Always write down your formula, because if you don't, the examiner can't give you credit if you make a mistake. Okay, oops, I'm writing cos instead of sine. There we go. So, a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. And now I simply put in my values. Well, A is x, big A is 105, so x over sine 105 is equal to 7 over sine 35, and I want to get x on its own, so I need to multiply by the bottom of the left-hand fraction, so multiply by sine 105. On the left, those signs are going to cancel to leave the x on its own, and I'm just going to rewrite this. I get x equals 7 sine 105 over sine 35. Notice I haven't done any working out yet. I'm going to leave it all to the end and stick that into my calculator. And if I do that, I get 11.8 centimetres. And I've been asked for it three significant figures, so that's what I've done. OK, let's have a look at another question. Let's label up my triangle first. So what are we trying to find? Well, now, this triangle's already labeled ABC, but I'm going to relabel it because I actually want to find that angle, so I'm going to call that one A, which makes this side little a. I'm going to leave the B as it is and label that one little b, but cross out the A that's there, call it C, and this one's little c. Okay, so even if your triangle is already labeled ABC, make sure it's labeled how you want it. So having done that, I'm going to write down what I know. Well, what do I know? I know little a is 10. I know little b is 13. I know little c is 
15, and I'm trying to find big A. That's what was called Y. So what connects all of those? Well, the cosine rule does. Both forms do. I'm trying to find the angle, so I'm going to use the second form. Write down the formula. Cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. How you remember that is up to you. Okay, I've taught people who've made up chants, songs, all sorts of things. Right, so put in the letters and numbers. A is Y. B is 13, so I got 13 squared plus 15 squared minus 10 squared all over 2 times uh, B times C, so that's 13 times 15. And I still wouldn't work that out. Now, remember that if you know cos y and you want to use y, you need to use cos to the minus 1, which is shift cos on your calculator. And I would just put all of this in the big bracket using the fraction template inside it, and your calculator will cope with that very well. It's less likely to make a mistake than you are. So, uh, to one decimal place, if I put that in my calculator and press equals, I get 41.1 degrees. I will do one more question, just because it's slightly different again. And what do we do first? Well, again, it's already labeled ABC, but actually I'm going to relabel. I'm going to call the length of AC. I'm going to call it X. Um, just so I've got uh, a letter to refer to later. And now that's what I want to know. So I'm going to label my triangle big A and little a like that. I'll leave the C as it is, so call that one little c, and change the A that was there into a B. So again, just starting again with the labeling. Now what do I know? Well, I know big A is 58. I know little b is 14.1. And I know little c is 12.4, and I'm trying to find what I've called little a, but I've also called it x, just for um, give it a name. And now I can choose my formula. Again, little a, little b, little c, and big A is what I'm trying to find, and that is that formula there. Um, actually, I'm trying to find little a, aren't I? So let's go for this formula here, that would be better. And so I get a squared equals b squared plus c squared, looks like Pythagoras' theorem, but with this extra bit, uh, minus 2bc times cos a. Stick in the numbers, well I've called it x, so x squared is equal to 14.1 squared plus 12.4 squared minus 2 times 14.1 times 12.4 times cos of 58. And so x is equal to the square root of all of that. Okay, I'm going to write it out again just so that I can check what I'm putting into my calculator. 14.1 squared plus 12.4 squared minus 2 times 14.1 times 12.4 times cos 58. And if you type all of that into your calculator correctly and round to three significant figures, you will get 12.9 centimeters. So be methodical label your triangle correctly, do the standard exam thing of writing down what you know and what you want to know, choose a formula, substitute, and solve.